Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. Now, Claudia. Mama? Mama? Yes? What time does the kitchen clock say? Same as the clock in your room. The clock in my room doesn't say anything. David forgot to wind it last night. It's 6.40. Is that all? What time would you like it to be? At least 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock's a nice round time. I always like 7 o'clock myself. David will be home by 7. He'll be sitting there in that big chair, drawing on his pipe, telling me everything that happened today. You mean you'll be pulling it out of him with all your questions? What do you mean, David's not the kind of man you pull things out of? Hey, what are you doing? Getting ready to get dinner ready. Any objections? No, I'll help. Oh, thank you, no. Thank you, no, why not? You've got a lovely habit of getting exactly between me and what I'm doing. It's taken me years to perfect it. I'm glad to see you've noticed. I don't know what you're going to do when you're in a kitchen of your own and there's no one around for you to disturb. I don't know what I'm going to do either. You'll manage. If I don't, it'll be all your fault. Mine? Mm Mm-hmm. These last two weeks that David and I have been living with you, I haven't learned one thing about housekeeping. As a matter of fact, I've forgotten everything I did know. That must have been a great effort. It was, but I managed. And that's my fault. Of course it is. You hardly let me help you at all. Easier to do it myself. Been doing it myself for years. I know. That's what makes me feel so guilty. Oh, what are you kicking about? You've helped, you made the beds, and you did the dusting. Oh, dusting's not anything. It's just taking dust from one place and putting it in another, that's all. That's when you do it. I suppose when you do it, it disappears. Poof, like smoke. Never thought of using a damp rag, did you? That's quite an idea. Mm. Try it tomorrow. See what happens. I will. Dave and I will leave this apartment absolutely dustless. Wait and see. Dustless and quiet. Delightful change, thank you. You're welcome. And you'll be welcome at our place any time. Very kind of you. Any time, any time. Claudia. Hmm? You've got a little stage fright about moving away, haven't you? Nonsense, have I? Well, you should have. Should I? I thought I was just being a big sissy. This is one of those times when being a sissy is a little wiser than not being one. At least it shows that you've got a sense of responsibility. And a husband, even David, is a responsibility. Husband. My husband. Does that sound funny to you, too? Yeah, it does, Miss, it does. It sounds so married. Marriage is like that. At least it will be for you starting tomorrow. That's just what I mean, Mama. So far, living here with you has been just like a beautiful holiday. Do you realize I never house kept for a man before? After tomorrow, I'll be up to my ears in it. I realize that David does, too. That's why I've been feeding him up. Mama, you'll help me, won't you, if I get in a mess? What do you think? I think you're very fond of David, and you wouldn't want to see him starve all of a sudden. I'm very fond of David, but you're wrong. I'd rather see him starve in your home than get him fat in mine. I think he'd rather, too. Did anybody ever tell you you're a heartless woman? I wish I were. Well, cheer up, you are. David said so last night. He did? Mm -hmm. Well, wait till I get my hands on him. He shouldn't have long to wait. He'll be home any time. Tell me, you like this green dress on me, Mama? It's all right. Nothing to brag about. David said I look like a string bean in it. Say, am I always going to look like a string bean? I thought getting married would help. Cheer up. Someday you look like a lima bean. You know, speaking in vegetables, I think I'd, I'd rather look like an artichoke heart. More like a squash, even. You know, one of those nice curvy squash with small waists? I think David will settle for the string bean and like it. He'll have to, I'm afraid. Maybe I can see him coming up the street. Don't fall out. Why should I fall out? What time is it now? Exactly one minute later than it was a minute ago. Oh, is that all it is again? Claudia, are you still leaning out that window? Don't lean out so far. You worry me to death. I'm all right. You want to be here when David comes, don't you? Uh Uh-huh. Then stop performing like a trapeze artist. I can't understand why he isn't home. It's still early. It is not. It's way after 7 o'clock. Well, close the window. It's getting too cool. All right. 
And stop walking around like that. You're wearing the carpet thin. The carpet, that's a fine thing to think of at a time like this. Somebody's got to think of the carpet. You're worried, too. Ridiculous. I know you are. I know you're bluffing me. I think you're smart, don't you? Just because you blame it on the carpet doesn't mean I can't tell you mean David. Oh, Mommy, you don't suppose that No, he... I don't suppose that. It's funny. This morning he said, if I don't go now, I'll never... What? I'll never come home. Oh, you little fool. Well, did he go now? Almost. For you, too, that's as good as now. I think I'll call his office. And what'll you say? Suppose, Mr. David, not in there. You look out the window while I call, would you, Mama? If you see him, I can hang up. And if he's not at his office, you'll feel much worse. Then maybe they'll tell me he left late. Then maybe they won't. I'll have to take the chance. Go on, Mama. Look up the street, will you? You see him? No. He, he walks very straight, but his right foot turns out a little. No, David. May I come back in now? I suppose you might as well. Well, what did the office say? How long ago did he leave? There's no answer. They've all left. Of course they have. It's getting really late, Mama. Where are you going now? Look at the clock. That won't help. Looking at the clock never helps. Mama, it's getting on eight. Oh, that kitchen clock gains like crazy. Well, the roast doesn't gain time. Since when does a roast tell time? Since now it's all dried out. Mm, I put it into her. No, that's not it. David's home too late. Now, while you're up, Claudia, baste the roast, will you? All right. If I have to add water, the gravy's almost gone. Use some stock from the icebox. I know. All of it? How much is there? Not much. Then use all of it. There. Looks awfully cooked still. Anything else? My knitting over there on the bookcase. Oh, Mama, I, I never thought that sometimes it'd be awful to love someone so much. I know. Everything gets different. Every minute so terribly important. You'll get used to it. Never. You know, in a way, I hope not. You will, though. A little in time. Mama, did I keep you waiting often? No, not Suppose often. Suppose something has... What if he... It hasn't. How can you be so sure? You're not really, are you? Of course I am. I'm going to that kitchen this minute and put in the potatoes. Putting in the potatoes won't prove anything. Is your knitting. Oh, Mom, that must have been terrible for you. What do you mean, terrible? You had to wait for me all alone. At least I've got you to talk to. Thanks. What if this had happened after we moved away from here? If I had to be alone now, waiting all by myself, I... I don't know what I'd do. You'll be alone many times, Claudia. And you'll manage. Will I? It's getting so late. Claudia, maybe David met someone he knows. Let the poor boy alone. That's not like David. Besides, he'd have called. It's only 7.45. You say 7.45 because you think it sounds less late than quarter of eight. I know. It's more than a whole hour since he should have been here. Maybe he had to see a contractor about something or other. He'd have called. All right. If it makes you feel better, go on and worry. Don't you scold me. I get it from you. Oh, I don't see why you couldn't have inherited any of my better qualities. Which? Well, uh... Do I have to list them? Uh-huh. Could you list yours? Well, certainly I could. Well, go on. Oh, too many to think of. No, oh, you're perfect. Claudia, why are you closing your eyes like that? Just imagining David walking up the street, coming up in the elevator, opening the door, kissing me. That doesn't need so much imagination. And now I'm going to get up from this chair, walk over to that window, open it, look out, and see David walking up the street. Well? He's not. It didn't work. What didn't work? David... David, I didn't hear you come. Hello, darling. Uh, darling, don't you talk. David, I was so worried. There, there. I, I know you were. Hello, Mother. You're a fine one, David Norton. I let you marry my daughter, and the first thing you do is worry me half to uh, death. Don't scold me, Ma. Don't scold me. <laughs> well, I guess I haven't any further excuse not to put in those potatoes. Glad you're home. You're big good for nothing. Thanks, Mother. Oh, David. Here, darling. Blow. I don't need to blow. <laughs> you don't? I never blow. You don't? I never cry either. No? I'm just so happy to see you, that's all. Me 
me too. Say, you look all right. I am all right. You sure? Sure. Come on with me while I wash up. You're kind of sooty. I feel sooty. Oh, David, you have no idea how awful it is to wait and wait and... Say, where were you? Now that I think of it, I'm mad. I was caught in the subway tie-up. I don't care how mad you got, I'm not going back. Why didn't you phone? How could I? With a nickel. Oh, you goop, there's no phone on a subway train. But in the station, there must have been one. That's just it. I couldn't get to a station. The train was stuck between 63rd and 64th Street. You could have gotten killed. David, was it an accident? Nope. Just stuck. Oh. Hey, don't sound so disappointed. I could wring your neck all that worrying for nothing. How do you think I felt? What do you mean? They're stuck between 63rd and 64th Streets, knowing I had two worrisome females pacing the floor at home. Anyway, Mama didn't pace the floor. She dropped stitches. David, you worried about us worrying? Of course I did. I knew you'd be imagining all sorts of terrible things had happened. You knew right, all right. Don't you know, darling? I'm always going to come home to you. Are you, David? Whenever it's up to me. Oh. Do you believe that now? When I'm with you, David, I believe it. But when I'm alone, it's not so easy. That's when you've got to try the hardest. But, David, wouldn't you have worried about me, I mean? You're happy to not have worried, like anything. You would have? And just see to it, young lady, that you telephone. But, but, but... No buts about it. You telephone no matter where you're stuck, you hear me? Yes, darling, I hear you. Now... story material used in this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. Coca-Cola, there's enough Coke for the family, even with guests coming to supper. There's enough to go around even after Junior has treated his pals in the afternoon. Yes, there's more Coke now, enough so you can have it on hand like old times. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. Mm-hmm.